Hey guys, welcome to the Water Cooler on our little corner of the internet live from Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Michael Sorg and it's the Movie Minute. With me as usual is the man, the man who usually tells me, but I can actually tell something back to him for this one. We're talking Thor 2 today and it's Mango at Rambling Mango on the Twitters. How you doing? I'm good. How are you guys doing? How are you doing? Blake? I'm doing great. I got to see my movie that I've been anticipating all summer. And, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, this was, this was the movie. We'll do the quick, uh, we'll do the quick, uh, lineup of this past weekend. And, um, of course the movie that we will be talking about for, uh, ran away with it. Uh, they, the funny thing about, <laughs> the funny thing about the movie industry it's technically considered a failure because they're estimating the movie to get a hundred million dollars on opening weekend, and it only raked in somewhere around eighty, eighty-five, eighty-six million. So I think the movie industry is. Fun. I think I think I think as far as that goes, I think there's a lot of armchair uh, movie critics out there that I, I really think that's. When you look at it, wait, we're saying how it only made eighty five. Isn't the the worldwide total like two hundred and fifty million dollars uh, for, for it's, opening weekend? Yeah. Well, I don't, oh, I don't know. That's it, the total might, so far. I don't know the movie that is. Is that Titanic? No, I'm talking about this movie has made a worldwide two hundred and fifty so far. It released earlier oh. other places. Two hundred fifty so far. Where are you getting that number? I don't know. I, I mean, I'm only going. I have not checked uh, the box office. Um, was it no, Nofo or whatever? I haven't looked on there yet. I'm just going by the uh, Rotten Tomatoes statistics. Box office so far for opening weekend, it pulled in 80, 85. But they're they're forecasting this to go well beyond uh, what the original did. I think the bigger story actually about Thor was the fact that. This movie, the uh, fan, um, the audience rating was for the first time extremely higher than what uh, the critics were, in the sense that it usually does fluctuate like that, but more in the sense that the first movie had a higher rating uh, allocated to it for the first four than the second one did. So the critics thought that the first four better than the second one in which case i would like to slap them across the forehead i gotta say because i mean we're, we're talking about uh, critically okay it, it, it's better it, the first one was better but financially this one was better uh, obviously you know the audience style was better I, I mean i think this really calls into question the whole how much weight do we put on 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 critics which i think has always been questionable uh but still it, the question is, did we like it? Did everybody go and pay their money? Will people go and pay their money again over the next few weeks? Uh, are people going to buy the DVD? These guys are making money. It is not an issue. Uh, I, I think I, I have not heard anybody say anything really bad about the movie just yet. Um, you know, amongst people I know that have that have watched it. But, of course, the people I know that are going to watch it are the fans that read Marvel stuff. Um, yeah. I think it's just most interesting because this, I don't know a lot of people who follow Thor. Which I think is something with a lot of these guys with the Avengers. In comparison, there's not a lot of people that have experienced a Thor cartoon, comic book, you know, etc. up until now. Like for me, I don't know half of the stuff in this movie as a comic book reader. Um, and I'm pleasantly surprised and pleased with everything coming at me. Maybe it's because it's like, you know, going and watching The Hunger Games. I don't mind anything that may be odd in there or Lord of the Rings because I never read the books, right? Yeah. Um, I did read some of the Lord of the Rings afterwards, just to qualify. Um, but still, it, it, you know, taking it in new, and I think just taking it as a movie and with an icon that you know, um, and obviously, well, this is kind of like the end of a trilogy between Thor Avengers, now Thor 2, right? Yeah. Well, like, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. Let me round off the, the quick movie lineup news. Uh, Jackass still held strong at number two. Or Jackass actually... Stayed at number two. I'm gonna say it stayed at number two, and number three was the last Vegas uh, Freebirds. The reason why I'm saying that both of these spots did not change is because Ender Game has been removed from the top three spots after one weekend 
movie just dropped, which makes me feel, um, I don't know, that's kind of sad. It was a good movie for what it was, but I think it shows that the audience uh, didn't really want to see children, I guess the teens, didn't really want to see Hunger Games, doesn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, that's unfortunate. I hear the book's really good. I'm actually about to get the audio book for it and uh, listen through there. My buddy said that I would be pleasantly surprised. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's that. So that, that rounds it off with the, with the movies. And just to put it in perspective, Thor did come in eight times with eight times more money than those four movies that I mentioned. Mm-hmm. So that, it ran away this weekend. That's the movie people were telling us. Yeah, is it, did anything else even come out uh, like that, that? That's anywhere in comparison. That isn't like a, a Oscar y date movie or something like that. You know, it was definitely straight on, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't think anybody wanted to compete with Thor. So that that's definitely cool. Um, yeah. So let's get back into Thor. I gave you some some questions that. Uh, did you get a chance to look at them? I, I saw what, your questions here. The, this is the Mike Sorg review. Okay. Quick, this is like the, uh, what is it? The review in 30 seconds. Go. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, well, I liked it. Um, uh, did the movie flow? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't see where there's a problem with any flow or anything. It definitely did not feel long. I didn't feel like, oh my God, is it two hours? Oh, wow, that was two hours. Uh, yeah. Did the character. It definitely, it definitely moved from shot to shot uh, and seeing the scene, I thought pretty smoothly there are definitely no lulls in this one yeah like there were definitely no lulls like very you know versus like the first one uh where it you know you had your asgardian scenes and then it was just like back on earth it was very like you know thor was cut down it was very you know real worldy and him dealing with that uh this one was just like weird world weird world a little bit here you know and it it, it 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 just had a lot going on um did the characters? I love the brother, the brother uh, interaction in this one. Uh, I mm-hmm. thought it was a lot of fun what they did with that, and they they really kind of delved into it. Um, I, when I watch it again, definitely. Uh, as with most Marvel movies, I end up buying it on DVD. Now I'm kind of incorporating, making sure I get a digital download with that as well. Um, and would I recommend it? Yeah. Yeah, to anyone. I I, I think you know uh, the people. You know, we we had uh, uh, Missy and, and her sister with us, and 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 I don't think you know they don't read they read Thor or follow any of that, but they follow the Marvel movies. So yeah. I, mean, I think you know that's as close as I got to somebody you know watching it. That's not like holy crap superhero movies. You know what I mean? And I think yeah. I think this is just this is the thing right now, and this is the buzz, and, and these are the people Marvel is continually doing the best job at this right now. Definitely, compared to DC, hands down. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what was the last question? Did you answer all of them? I, I emotional impact. I don't know. Like, I, my emotional impact was that was cool. That was cool. That was cool. You know, that's I, a good emotional impact to have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is one of those movies where you go to see on the big screen to see the crazy big stuff that happens and the sound and everything. And yeah. uh, and, and I think it delivered on all that. I didn't really get into the, the mushy story or anything like that. But I thought um, they didn't really – I didn't think they they overplayed the, the, the uh, uh, relationship too bad that it got in the way of the action and the story, you know? Um, yeah. I definitely think that – they did a good job of pulling back on the uh, the relation the relational between uh, Natalie Natalie Portman character and Thor. Yeah. They kind of scaled that back. I mean, there was even a joke about how we didn't see the big kiss was at the end of course, but it was almost like forgotten about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and because of the way they put it, a lot of people didn't even get to see the big kiss. That's so. true. Um, but no, I think it was, there was enough in there. There was enough with her interweaved and she was part of the story and not just around for the story. You know what I mean? Um, and, and it's, I think it was enough to get the, the girls into it, I would think. Um, and that's about it. And that's all it needs to be. Definitely took his shirt off quite a bit of times. You know, for the ladies, for the ladies, you know, uh, that's why this is the movie for everybody. Right. Um, (laughs) You know, so does Captain America, you know, so, so, 
it, it and again we're still mixing in enough stuff that this feels like a bigger movie it feels like it's part of a bigger universe they yeah you know just like we saw in iron man iron man it, you know we're still referencing uh fallout from again the last thor movie and avengers and what happened there obviously with loki being a, a big part of that this this really kind of more directly becomes kind of a sequel to avengers to see okay what happened to loki you know yeah and what's next for him and where does he go from here and i and, think and, and, yeah and i'm uh, sorry to cut you off but they definitely also do remind us throughout this movie that you are still in the marvel universe there are a couple scenes in there that that were pretty humorous and in reminding us, like, oh, just in case you didn't remember, these other characters are part of this movie. Yeah, I mean, we, we still have references to S.H.I.E.L.D. We still have other things that happen. We still have our obligatory Stan Lee shot. Um, <laughs> I mean, and again, more characters from Avengers. Uh, but, I mean, pretty much the same ones we've seen. Uh, you know, uh, Coulson's busy doing his own thing, so I, I'm not surprised of him not showing up with these latest this latest round of them. Uh, but I am very excited. Next week's, not tonight's, uh, we we record this here on Tuesday, uh, uh, five thirty. So, uh, so to, not tonight's, but next week's uh, Agents of Shield, I believe, is supposed to be the fallout from what happens in Thor two. Which I think I want to see how they play that off, how much they put in this. There's a certain something that got loose. Maybe that plays into it. I think that makes sense uh, to me. But somebody somebody in our discussion last night says, "Oh, I don't think they have the special effects budget for that for a TV show." But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but there was that question because they did bring up Shield, and I, I'm sitting there for a lot of this, especially at the end. Where is Shield in all this? I know. You know? I have that exact thought. <laughs> but you. But the same thing happens in the comic book. You you go read like Wolverine, and some crazy world ending thing is happening over here. Meanwhile, some other crazy world ending thing is happening over in Avengers. And it's like, why aren't you helping each other out? Because apparently something big and world-ending is always happening all the freaking time. Uh, and then you just explain a way that the Fantastic Four is somewhere in space somewhere. Like, I don't know how many times I've, I've heard that excuse. At least this time we can say that they're handcuffed by Fox. Uh, but, but that still makes sense. Uh, but, but, but yeah, there was definitely that feel of like, and I'm sure like the episode next week will say, well, we didn't make it because blah, 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 you know? Um, yeah. Probably. Yeah. So, I, think that, I think that would be hilarious how they interact that. Yeah. And, and maybe, maybe, maybe the stuff we're seeing how it's like shield is the big monster kind of thing uh, in Captain America, uh, as we're seeing the trailer, maybe we go back to, well, we missed on the, the Thor thing and we almost lost the world there. So we're not going like, they step it up more because of that, you know, but he's like, Hey, yeah. aliens just like drop big ships on us like twice in a row. Uh, let's go do this, you know? Um, you know, I, you can kind of get Shield not entirely getting involved with that uh, Iron Man three situation, right? Because it was kind of a low level threat. It was a terroristic threat. It wasn't as big. Like we're going to send our giant helicopter and take care of this. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, like I, I feel like anything related to Thor would spark some interest with Shield, especially seeing how like you know he's a godlike figure who wields electricity and a hammer that will follow him through space <laughs> so yeah fun sequence with that but, too yeah or, or to your, your final rating let's go down my lineup really quick so uh did i like the movie i wrote uh yeah it was pretty good much better than the first one <laughs> did the movie flow yeah i i find it definitely moved along from, from scene to scene very easily and in, in a in a, a pleasing way so, you know, I, I didn't, there was never any point where I was like, wait, what's going on here? Like, why are we back here? So I thought that did a pretty good job. Did the characters develop? Uh, definitely. I think, hands down, Loki was the, the, the star mm -hmm. of this. Um, and I did like the villain, too. Uh, what was this? Uh, what was uh, what, uh, Christopher Eccleston, uh, the the original reboot Doctor uh, from yeah. back in like the 2005. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize it was even him until I saw the the closing credits. I'm like, oh, it's the Doctor, I, 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 but he's so <laughs> done up in makeup and and everything that I, I I hardly could even tell, you know. Yeah, I definitely think that that whole race definitely came off as like a, a very uh, very good evil kind of presence. It was interesting, though, I did have some kind of, like, roadblocks to that, where, like, 
going back in the darkness, okay. But when you get into the whole, like, I guess, that universe, it kind of is explained with magic and, I guess, the, the stones or these, uh, the Tesseract or whatever they're called, like, the element stones. Yeah. So... I think I you're looking for that. the Infinity Stones, sir. I'll keep you straight on the Marvel lore here. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> uh, my emotional reaction was they were very nice effects. A lot of people uh, were complaining that they weren't over the top or any kind of groundbreaking effects. No. I think like, all of those people are on drugs and still <laughs> high on gravity. But, <laughs> but that so, being so said... So gravity, I mean, man. Now they're like special effects hipsters. They're really like so better than gravity. Yeah. I mean, the, the compositing on that final shot where we see that spaceship appear in London, which made me laugh that, oh, yes, I'm glad New York, you know, New York's already been destroyed. Let's go to the next major city. And they don't destroy, like, an entire city either. They, 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 they screw up a pretty good area in London, but it's not like it's not yeah. like the mass destruction you saw in, in and there was actually a question because I the Kevin Feige, I think is pronounced, uh the the uh, producer on all, all the Marvel Studio work. Um he was on Nerdist last week. They had a Marvel week great stuff they had him, the guy plays Loki and um actually uh you know the guy plays Aiden Colson on there as well. Yeah. Um, and they were like like they're like, hey I think we're getting a little bit of city destruction fatigue between Avengers, between uh, Man of Steel. Every time there's a budget for special effects, we destroy a city. Can we get over yeah. that? He's like, yeah, yeah. It's, we're not really doing that in Thor this time. Uh, so it was good to see that, you know. Um, yeah, I, I think I think it was it was interesting. It was a different uh, threat. It opened up this whole other world that we don't know, you know, with these other realms. You know, we always heard about the nine realms in the first Thor movie. Uh, now we got to see a bit more of them, you know, um, yeah. in a very inventive way, actually. Uh, but but and they explain why, you know, why didn't he come back and check in on on uh, on on Jane Foster and, and everything like that it was not Natalie Portman's character. Um, they really did a good job and this is that is still the most impressive part is how much is interweaved between these movies and that has got me hooked on them and i cannot get enough of it and it is exactly what hooks me into their comic books you know um so we're good until we have a giant civil war event that that makes us fatigued you know which seems like it's it might be coming <laughs> it could uh, be. i also i also definitely thought this movie was funny they did a very good job of sprinkling in the humor where need be and um, they did it in a way that wasn't overly cheesy, so I, I thought that was cool. Uh, would I watch it again? Uh, yeah, I'd probably see it again. And would I recommend it? Definitely. If you like this kind of movie and you like this kind of stuff, I'd definitely go see it. It's definitely good to see it on the big screen. Bring on the superheroes. Bring it on, Marvel. Bring on your, uh, your crazy Sorry. Guardians of the Galaxy next year. Uh <laughs> oh, geez. So, so on the quick wrap up of this of this movie review, what was your? You can either give your out of five star rating. I already know what you would recommend seeing this at, mm -hmm. but give your give your quick review of this. Uh, your final rating, if, if you're at all an action, big action movie or a superhero fan, I'm going five out of five on this. I think it fits all. Okay. It, it's everything. It's everything that I loved about Avengers, but with one Avenger. And you would definitely see this, and I'm assuming you would recommend people seeing this in the theater. Oh yeah, definitely a theater. Um, yeah, well, I just went to a regular theater, but I, I always try to go to the car mics around here because they have the newer uh, projection technology. So, um, huh. although the screens are getting a little iffy lately, uh, so I might have to see what my other options are. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, I, and I think they do. They did a 3D version of this. It's, it's probably fun in that, but I, I you know. I, I'm good with the theater, but that's my preference. Uh, definitely that. Definitely, if you're a Marvel fan, you know you're gonna love it. Uh, unless you're one of those, you know, comic book nerds that knows Thor inside and out, and I'm sure they didn't do something right for you. Um, yeah. I, and, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there, there's that. Uh, I, for instance, I didn't. Need, I had no idea, more or less, what the ending meant. Uh, but I know they're touching on stuff that I have never ever ever laid my eyes on in comic book form uh, yeah same here 
So I, that that's exciting because that that means there's like instead of like everybody's like wait wait the way Iron Man was like this because everybody's seen like you know maybe an Iron Man cartoon or something that's my experience like the '90s an Iron Man cartoon uh, an Avengers uh, cartoon here or there so like even if you're not a comic book crazy person you're like okay I know I know a little bit about Captain America I've always heard of Captain America you know uh, and, and seeing how he is. Uh, you know, that story's been told over and over again with something like Captain America and Thor's, you know, origins, you know, we have these cartoon movies that are out as well. Um, but you get into the stuff like the Thanos stuff that we saw a little thing at the end of Avengers, uh, you know, it's gonna, I think, continue through Guardians of the Galaxy because I think that's more that area. Um, yep. This is new territory for a lot of people. And, you know, I remember Iron Man, people thought it was crazy that Iron Man had a movie. Now they're really digging in to you know remember blade wasn't really a popular character at all yeah. like it was the weirdest character for them to go reach in and remake and make a movie out of and it did tremendous uh yeah. to, to a trilogy and even <laughs> even at least a season of a series right um, i definitely think people have been craving these kind of movies mm -hmm. for for a while and i mean especially since we grew up in a like i'm not like i'm not a hardcore comic book person but i definitely grew up with comic books, you know, going to the library or buying my own. Yeah. And the X-Men cartoons, um, mm. the Iron Man Fantastic Four cartoons. So that's definitely, I feel like, our generation. So yeah, and <laughs> they are, they're primed yeah. for this kind of stuff. And, and, and never has anybody touched base on, like, even, you know, the truest uh, Batman fan is going to be pissed about uh, uh, several things in the bat latest round of the Batman movies, especially. Um, yeah. the true Batman fan says that they have never done a good Batman movie. And to be honest, no, they have, they have not done one completely, completely, completely true to form. Um, you know, but you can accept the Christopher Nolan ones as the truest of them. Um, and just very good movies in general. Um, you know, yeah, I'd love to talk to somebody who could just like go off on, on not having an authentic, the Christopher, Christopher Nolan's Batman was Probably the best that we'll get. Yeah. Dark City didn't hold back. I mean that very, so, re very whatever. respectful, very respectful for the material, but not um, versus the Marvel movies. I feel like I'm watching the comic book come alive versus the Batman. Yeah, really I think Marvel has done done a phenomenal job of captivating people and pulling them into this universe and world. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's definitely something that they see. I'm getting a lot of noise. Yeah, you're getting some weird feedback there. Uh, but, you know, yeah, really, you know, versus I think the first Spider-Man movie felt like, okay, they got, Sp I, I thought they got Spider-Man. You know, for, for that, you know, it, it looks kind of long in the tooth if you go back and watch the first few, Spider you know, that Spider-Man trilogy again with Sam Raimi. But I think they got Spider-Man. Even the new one, a lot of people hate it, but I think they got a different tone, but it was a version of Spider-Man I was familiar with. Um but, the, what, the but Spider -Man? yeah, I, I, yeah, even the, even the new Spider-Man. But then you go to these <laughs> movies. Don't feel like oh, they got a Captain America movie. Oh, they got a Iron Man movie. It's like no, they got Marvel. You know, and it's Marvel getting Marvel. Um, yeah. And and even X Men. X Men has always been a really love hate relationship for me. You know, I mean, I love that the X Men is on screen, but there's always a little bit here and there of really, and and, and it's been mishandled for several years too. Um, but it was definitely like, you felt like these are as good of X-Men as I'm going to get on my screen. And this is, I don't think I can get a better Thor, Captain America, Iron Man on my screen. Yeah, I will agree with that, especially with a, uh, I mean, like, let's say hands down, the Iron Man movies are the ones that got me captivated. Iron Man 1 and Iron Man 2, I will still say hands down, that's the best thing Marvel brought out. Those are the ones that got, you know, everything started. And besides Avengers, um, I would say Iron Man's the way to go. So compared to that, I, I don't know how people would relate Thor to, I would say, Iron Man 1 or 2. But, I mean, they're different kind of heroes. So I yeah. guess, I don't know, I guess it's pers personal preference. But, I mean, hands down, Iron Man is the one that still holds Marvel's like big. That's their big money maker. It's their blueprint. It, it, it's, it really has been their blueprint for the rest of them as well. So, so but um, all right, little well, yeah. So I, I mean, my final wrap up with that review. After if, initially, I gave it a three out of five. 
I think I'm rolling that back up to about a four. Um, but based on if I compare it as a movie on its own compared to to the original Thor, I would give it a four. If I'm comparing it to the Iron Man movies and Avengers two, it goes. I think I pull it back down to a three point five. But with that being said, and not me being like over critical or anything, it's a good movie. I would definitely recommend going to see it in theater. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So, so let's see what else do we got? Oh, let's go. Oh, that's all spoiler stuff. We can't talk about that yet. <laughs> so let's go. Uh, let's see what else is interesting in the news. Um, the Lego trailer. I guess the I think it's the final or first trailer. I'm not sure what they were considering it, but um, I watched this trailer the other day. And it actually made me want to see this movie for the first time. Really? Yeah. And I don't know if it's just the the perceived comedy seems like something that I mean it's definitely not tailored to kids, obviously. I think it's tailored to our generation. And wait, but, this, is is this the Batman Lego movie or they're doing a whole separate Lego movie? It, no, this is the Lego movie. The intro, I believe, starts off with with uh, does it, is this the one that starts off with Batman? <laughs> I don't know which one that you're. I don't, I don't know at. if I, I, I found the real one or this is some kind of stop motion crazy stuff. Oh, there no, is this one looks for real. This looks for real. Off, yeah, there is one that starts off with like Batman kind of just doing like a little spill, which is pretty funny. Wow, this is a, this isn't like the Lego like the Batman Lego movie CG stuff. Like this is looks like it's like a stop motion. Wow, like, yeah, it looks like they took Robot Chicken and and made a Lego movie out of it. <laughs> that one scene that they showed where he walks in and it's like extremely expensive coffee. He's like, oh yeah, we're always happy. He's like, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's the one that got me. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm seeing this movie. It's the right kind of comedy, right? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna plug in my uh, headphones. That could probably help with some of the background noise. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll fill in the meantime, I guess. Right? I'm uh, back. You're back. Okay. <laughs> that was quick. Okay. Uh, I didn't get that far. Does that help at all? Did, Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit. It'll probably help on your end more than it will mine. Uh, So anyways, Lego movie. Um, Great. I mean, mean, they've really done a great job of reinventing Lego as more than just a pile of bricks. Is that the Ninja Turtles? Yeah, there's. I think the Ninja Turtles show up. Uh, You got Morgan Freeman, of course, playing uh, (laughs) like this white all being character which is funny I, I think it's hilarious that we use like black characters as like the voice of reasons in a lot of these movies like the matrix <laughs> <laughs> i i approve um but yeah i mean after saying this a lot of i i have a co-worker who was like how could you not be into this and i'm just like i don't know this is the legos you know i played with these i would build i think the the craziest Lego set I ever had was like a castle that I had where we had like the, the medieval set. See, I never what? had a set. I always just had a big bucket of Legos and I would, <laughs> but, but, but I also had a bunch of like superhero figures, like the old, uh, uh, superpower team ones, the bat, like it was pretty much like the super friends toys. Right. Um, yeah. but I would build vehicles for them and like, I don't know, stairways and buildings for them, you know, that were like additions to the hall of justice. Like that was, so uh, apparently I was before my time, uh, with this kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, I but everybody's had Legos pretty much right and we and and, you know everybody those little guys with the little orange heads are you know are 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 iconic you know um and i can't believe it took them this long to do something like this well i mean i i don't know how much of it is the technology because it does have the feel (laughs) of stop motion yeah i wonder how much i wonder how much of it though is fake stop motion meaning it's they're all 3d elements but they're just perceived they're animated in the stop motion I'm not sure, so that's, you know, I don't know what is behind the technology for this specific movie. And, and I think a lot of stop motion is really kind of CG enabled lately. Like, that's the feel yeah. I get from them. But yeah, I mean, besides that, I mean, 
that's the one that I'm pretty interested. Uh, besides news, I didn't really go much into news because I was so in, involved with Thor this weekend. So, but yeah, let's. Uh, I mean, that's it. Coming out this weekend, I could go to what's coming out this weekend to round out the show. Go for before it. Before we go into like our quick little spoiler zone area. But yeah, there is nothing coming out this weekend. <laughs> 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 you got the best man, the best man holiday. All I can say, I, I can't, I don't want to say anything bad about this movie, but I don't. I'm not personally. I'm not going to see this movie. So if somebody out there sees it and you know really loves it, let us know. But this is the like there are a lot of very good black uh, actors and actresses in this movie. Mm-hmm. But this just reminds me of like movies like The People's, um, the whole the Tyler, Tyler Perry stuff. Yeah, and that was the feel I got from it. But I didn't feel like I feel like I got the jokes as opposed to a Tyler Perry one. Although, what the hell with that Mady is Christmas thing that I saw in the trailer? What the hell? Um, but yeah, I, yeah. no, it, it actually looks like an entertaining movie. Like this seems like right off the bat, this seems like ah, it's on HBO. Okay, you know. Yeah, and I mean, the thing that's that's hard to judge is like when you see movies like. Um, uh, there's like the Family Stone, like movies like that. You think, all right, maybe this is just like the black version of it. But without, I I don't know. I I just it's listed as a comedy, and I think the Family Stone was listed as a drama. So I mean, I don't know. It might be. I got nothing. I got nothing to say. <laughs> Ty Diggs. I don't know what to say. I don't know why you're doing this. Terrence Howard. I don't know how much they're paying you for this one. Uh, yeah. Shanae Lane is a very attractive black woman. But that's not saying anything about, I mean, if you're going to see this movie for attractive black people, go see this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. There's your recommendation. I don't know. Is that a new point on the scale now? <laughs> that's like, I don't, I don't think they go into this movie really trying to like, I don't, I, like, I don't, I don't know what to say, Mike. Uh, maybe i should just force myself to watch it so i have something to so i could so i could have an opinion isn't that what they say like when voting yeah it's like if you don't vote you can't say anything there you go if you don't or i thought it was if you don't have anything nice to say um it was pointed out to us by chachi in the chat room who by the way still thinks you're a curmudgeon um that there is a lego marvel superheroes maximum overload movie on netflix right now uh well no it's 22 nice. minutes it's 22 minutes um, oh that's not a movie <laughs> is this the one nice I, I that came out on dvd like not too long ago is that what's what, what's going on here but uh actually <laughs> i'm curious now i i'm gonna add this to my list it's only 22 minutes i'm not dedicating a lot to it so so <laughs> why not right uh, Agreed. I'm going to add it to my list right now. Uh, anything else that we want to touch on before we get out of here? No, I think that's it. Do you want to? Do you want to do a quick spoiler? All right, we'll do a spoiler zone. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, I know other podcasts, but I think it's the only way it makes sense. Uh, so we'll put a graphic up. Uh, if you guys are on the live stream, just mute it until you see the graphic goes away or stick around here if you're on the podcast or the video cast. And we're going to talk uh, what we think about you know, full-on spoiler mode for Thor 2. Uh, and that's it. So thanks, Malengo, at Rambling Mango on the Twitter. I'm at Sorgatron as well. Um, and we'll see you guys next week. Cool. So you better do that. So uh, it's our first spoiler zone thing. I We really probably should come up with a different name because I know we both have heard that title on another one but uh yeah but uh so thor 2 uh, you know first one we've got to experience both of us got to see uh so we can actually talk about it uh a little bit here so what i mean so so again like you know, not knowing much uh i liked it and i like what they did with loki oh gosh loki's character is freaking awesome i you know what kills me about that is when he dies 
I literally for a second thought he was dead. And I was just like, why would they kill off such an awesome character like that? Mm-hmm. And then in that final shot where, you know, you see like the soldier on the planet who kind of cracks a smile. I'm like, oh, Loki's still alive. And then you see the father scene. Mm-hmm. You're just like, oh, this is. So, and this, this has been is, interesting because nobody, because they were like, we're leaving the theater. They're like, oh, I can't believe they killed, they killed Odin. I'm like, I don't think they confirmed that he's dead. In yeah. This one, like they, like I, I think Loki. I honestly think Loki's just bouncing around, uh, pretending to be other people all through that castle, uh, and just doing stuff like that. You know what I oh, mean? I would. I don't. Yeah, I don't think the father character is dead. He's probably just hidden somewhere. Yeah. Like in a in a very dark, which you know leads to an epic like brother battle eventually. Yeah. Because you you can only. <laughs> that's just. That's just awesome. Uh, but yeah, Loki, I think, definitely steals the show. Uh, I The one thing that I was a little disappointed, I feel like sometimes in these superhero movies, the villains always come off as very epically strong. Because, you know, like they made a point that um, this matter, once it was absorbed by, uh, by Malekith, he would be basically, like, unstoppable. Yeah. But then he was pretty easily stopped <laughs> like, I mean, yeah yeah uh, well i mean i mean it's, it's kind of like the uh superman's unstoppable until you find something else that's a little bit more unstoppable right I, I think that's where you run into the problem and then when you get to the point where you're dealing with characters like thor and like basically everything else in this universe uh mm-hmm. in the thor part of the universe like that idea of how strong they are is so like, you know, kind of like you don't really know how much real money a trillion dollars is when they're talking about it with the budget. You don't know how much real power Thor holds and what that compares to somebody else. And they just kind of free willingly write it, you know, and it's not entirely like he was um, just beat up to death. Right. They still had to do a little bit of trickery. Well, yeah, I mean, like, you could definitely see Thor's uh, vulnerability in the sense that he got his ass handed to him yeah. <laughs> on the on the one planet. And then you could definitely see, like, his just utter will in the in that last battle scene where he's, like, going through, like, this tornado of just crap. So it's always, I don't know, it's just interesting to see that, like, and I understand, like, I wasn't, it wasn't something that was like, oh, that sucks. But it was just like, oh well. I mean, they did it. <laughs> like I don't, I don't know if it was like a matter of like just pure luck, which it could have been, or or just a very clever scheme that maybe Tony Stark would have thought all mm-hmm. up. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I still think I still think uh, ultimately it was a good it was a good setup. The thing that I think is awesome about this Avengers storyline and universe is how all of these movies are intertwined. It's like, I didn't even realize that the, um, the, the gauntlet, the, the infinity, uh, what's it, Stones? infinity gauntlet. Yeah. Is that what? Yeah. Infinity I, didn't gauntlet. Even re- I didn't even realize that was in the first Thor movie. Did you, did you realize that, that was in the first Thor movie? Oh, in the in the Hall of Weapons, right? Yeah, they hint at it. It's like it's it's crazy, and then we see Thanos um, at the end of at the end of uh, the Avengers movie. Yeah, it's almost like all of these like these uh, Easter eggs that they're dropping. I mean, it's clear to everybody, and I mean, we we have a Guardian of the Galaxies coming out in 2014, so we know that this is leading up to it. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's also very, really cool that they're showing these heroes. I mean, I missed the second uh, ending, like the second spo- or whatever it's called, like the Easter egg ending of Thor. But apparently, from what I heard, it was basically him just living on Earth and kind of hanging up the, the cape and the hammer and settling in as though he was human. Um, well, and, you know, I don't think they even got that far. It was basically, unless there's multiple enders out there. Which no, is, I don't know. What, the, what did, I've heard that. Which, that's happened before with, I think, uh, X-Men or something. 
Uh, or no, no, Wolverine, I think they did multiple enders. Um, but no, and he, he just shows up. Like, they're all sitting around. He shows up. They kiss finally. And then you see that uh, monster from the uh, Ice World still running amok. Oh, so I, I really think that's going to be the S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, episode. Like, they're going to work that in somehow. You know what I mean? Because um, that seems like a big threat. Uh, well, it's definitely cool that you see all these heroes, which is leading up, of course, you know, to Avengers 2. Yeah. I guarantee you that in um, in the Winter Soldier for uh, Captain America, I bet at the end of that movie, he too will say, you know what, I don't trust something. Things aren't really, this isn't what I expected. And I bet he like hangs up the shield and kind of goes into submission, mm -hmm. which will all lead to some epic thing coming up in Avengers 3, or Avengers 2, uh, most likely Thanos. Um, coming I don't, maybe. that's that's where it gets interesting, because I'm not sure if you're going to see Thanos in Avengers 2, because they've already said that it's going to be Age of Ultron. Okay. Now, I think one of your elements could be, uh, like, like Ultron is after something like the Tesseract, you know, and it's another one of these stones, you know, like he gets power for something, or maybe he's made from that power or something, because they haven't introduced Ant-Man who creates Ultron, Ultron, so they're doing, they're most likely doing something different with Ultron as far as the origin goes, um, because Ant-Man doesn't come out until afterwards, and I don't know if they would introduce him in this movie. Um, interesting they could they very well could i mean they could they could still actually they could still introduce hank pym and then he's not ant-man until the ant-man movie very possible um remember dr connors was in just about every every spider-man movie and they never introduced him they never got around to it um you know pre-lizard uh and of course we just randomly did it in the last movie uh, yeah it, it's I mean, it'll, showing it'll, us the collector definitely leads into Guardians of the Galaxy, and yeah. based on that storyline, are we to assume that we'll see the Guardians of the Galaxy and the Avengers fighting alongside against Thanos? Like, I don't know. Like, what are we? What are we setting ourselves up for? I, I think. I think a, a little bit of that. Uh, uh, you know, breaking news from the Twitters. Uh, film critic Hulk is only four episodes into Gilmore Girls, but it's already Hulk spirit animal. <laughs> nice. Um, no, I think I, I think your Thanos situation because again we have two of the six stones. I think it is uh, as of now, and how many movies have we gone through? I think it all builds to like all this is going to build to like Avengers three. Oh, you think so? Avengers I think, 3? I think, I think that's going to be the ender for the entire series. Uh, and it's going to be the big blow up. It's going to be, cause you, you have your battle with Thanos is the dark side of this universe, right? Yeah. Like he is the all powerful. Oh my God. It doesn't get much wor wor worse than this, you know, kind of situation. Um, and what do you do after that? So I think that's what they're building up to. I, I think uh, that's the perfect thing, you know, um, for them to do. Hmm. That's a good point. So, I mean, with the possibility of Ant-Man next year and some other movies, I don't, the question is like, are we just going to get bombarded with so many superhero movies that we're just going to, I mean, at this point, I don't really event or at this point, Marvel isn't really doing much wrong. And I, I have a feeling that Captain America is going to be pretty good. The winter soldier, Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like I can wait this out mm -hmm. with the progression of these movies. And, and like you said, it's and, basically watching the comic book. And I think it's very well paced because we only get like two, maybe three movies a year from this part of the universe. You know, yeah. um, even when uh, I, if you pull up next year, we only have Captain America and Guardians of the Galaxy. And then the year after is Avengers. And after that, is ant-man hmm. so they're still pacing it you know I, I, you're still only getting two to a year for this thing it just seems like a lot because we remember iron man one was in 2007 yeah i'm oh, sorry well. 2008 and even that we went from that to 2010 having iron man 2 2011 having thor and captain america and then last year, we just had the Avengers. So there, I mean, it seems like a lot because we've already been through 
two, three, there's six of these things, seven, eight of these things. Um, yeah. So, but I, you know feel, go ahead. No, I was going to say, it makes me feel like Iron Man three might've just been created to continue the plot line for the rest of the other characters and into Avengers. But that's all I was going to say. The last thing I was going to say was, uh, what I read one comment on, uh, on one of the blogs I check out, they said the collector looked like uh, uh, Bagatu from Zoolander. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. But yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Awesome. All right. That's your spoiler zone. Thanks a lot for sticking around. Check us out uh, here next week. Live at SorgatronMedia.com about 5.30 p.m.-ish. Just about. Big episode 10. Later. See you.